Let me ask you a question, Hulky. Are you a bad guy or a good guy? Brother, but I got news for you. I'll be 102 years old, brother, by the time I step into the ring. And well, on camera, brother, I'm a great guy. But when that camera goes off, brother, oh, it's a different story. He's the one that ratted me to Vince when I tried to unionize. You're spending a fortune on a guy that's worthless. Hogan was pretty limited. The only thing he knew how to do was this and a leg drop. Hulk Hogan, a cultural hero of the 1980s who once encouraged his audience to pray and take their vitamins, has become one of professional wrestling's most despised individuals in recent years. With celebrity power like Hogan's, it was inevitable that he would rub people the wrong way at some point. Wrestling fans' opinions on the Hulkster are divided at the moment. Today, we'll look at the 10 wrestlers who hated Hulk Hogan in real life. We also get to dig into the tea as to why his relationships with these wrestlers took such a nosedive. Number 10. Bret Hart The tensions between Hart and the Hulkster began on the job. When Bret Hart was defeated by Yokozuna at WrestleMania 9, Hulk Hogan walked down the aisle and picked up the pieces, beating the champion in a quick 22-second bout to claim the championship. The Hulkster either directly or indirectly batted down Hart's claim that he agreed to the booking in the hopes that Hogan would eventually put him over. A former tag team wrestler himself, Hogan admitted on an episode of the Wrestling Shoot interview via Essentially Sports that he may have disparaged Hart. Unfortunately, Hogan never actually put Hart over and the hitman took it very personally. Since then, whenever there's a microphone in Hogan's face, Hart makes sure to bury him. In an interview with the Calgary Sun, he said, Hulk Hogan didn't know a headlock from a headlight and that Hogan was a one out of three wrestler. Hart appears content with maintaining the same amount of disdain for Hogan in both their personal and professional lives. As Hogan explained during his appearance on the Wrestling Shoot interview, he and Hart had a chance meeting during the 2005 WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Hart politely declined Hogan's handshake offer and Steve Austin quickly removed the hitman from the scene. There doesn't appear to be any love lost on the side of the Canadian legend when Hart went on Periscope a few years ago to call Hogan fake. You're spending a fortune on a guy that's worthless. Hogan was pretty limited. The only thing he knew how to do was this and a leg drop. Number 9. Jim Cornette Maybe it would be simpler to make a list of those who the Louisville Slugger doesn't have any sort of quarrel with. The former manager turned commentator Jim Cornette is not a fan of Hulk Hogan, however he may not infuriate him as much as Vince Russo does. Once Hogan's outbursts were made public, Cornette referred to him as effing nuts. Cornette has railed against Hogan's actions in WWE, WCW, and TNA since his days working with him in Alabama, and this latest interview is only the latest in the long line of them. To Cornette's long list of nemeses, add another name. Number 8. Jesse Ventura Jesse Ventura and Hulk Hogan got along fine at first. They both began their careers in the AWA and went on to have successful WWE careers. In later years, Ventura took on the role of the heel announcer, frequently criticizing Hogan during broadcasts. Ventura's animosity for Hogan was genuine, thus this wasn't a show. In the mid-1980s, Ventura spearheaded the formation of a union for professional wrestlers to improve their working conditions and salary. He made contact with Hogan, who informed McMahon, who promptly put an end to the dispute. Ventura has made it abundantly obvious that his animosity toward Hogan, who he holds responsible for derailing the company's attempt to transform, persists. Can't trust him. I don't, I'm not friends with anyone I don't trust. He's the one that ratted me to Vince when I tried to unionize. Number 7. Kofi Kingston To say that Kofi Kingston hates Hulk Hogan would be an overstatement, but he clearly has problems with Hogan. This would be strange, seeing as how they were never in the same place at the same time. Kofi was just getting started with The New Day when the whole infamous tape fiasco broke out. Number 6. Scott Steiner Scott Steiner is famous for eccentric ramblings. Big Papa Pump spares no insults while discussing Hogan. After the publication of the Hogan tape, Steiner went on an angry Twitter rant, during which he declared that Hogan's racist mindset was on full show and that he had ruined TNA. The incident when Steiner allegedly threatened Hogan's family led to a major uproar that ultimately resulted in Steiner being barred from attending the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Strangely, Hogan expressed concern about Steiner's health, but Steiner doesn't appear prepared to put the past between them to rest. Number 5. Bob Backlund Bob Backlund has been the undisputed WWE champion for six years. He was defeated by the Iron Sheik in December of 1983 and Hogan won the championship back a month later. 
Backlund has been vocal about his displeasure with WWE's recent cartoonish direction, and he and Hogan have battled in interviews. According to Hogan, Backlund actively worked against him to prevent him from becoming champion. While Backlund insists he doesn't detest the person, his venom in interviews shows otherwise, and he has fought back with rants about Hogan cheating in life. Number 4. Sid Right from the start, Sid Vicious was being called the next Hulk Hogan. Although Sid had brief championship reigns in WWE and WCW, he was never quite as popular as Hulk Hogan. Reasoning includes the fact that animosity between the two dates back to the 1992 Royal Rumble. Hogan was very insulted by the crowd's reaction to Sid's elimination of him. Hogan reportedly broke down in tears to Vince. Their match at Mania 8 was likened by Sid to an episode of The Three Stooges. With Sid blaming Hogan for his poor start in WWE, their feud continued in WCW. Number 3. Shawn Michaels Wrestling fans around the world witnessed Shawn Michaels' issues with Hulk Hogan unfold in the summer of 2005. As the summer progressed and Michaels interacted with Hogan in preparation for their SummerSlam battle, Michaels was increasingly frustrated by Hogan's political maneuvering, which had become routine by that point. In the Shawn Michaels story, Heartbreak and Triumph, Michaels was able to talk about his problems with Hogan. Michaels said that he and Hogan had planned on doing a best of three series to give both men their due, but Hogan dropped out of the series days before the pay-per-view, forcing Michaels to put Hogan over in a one-off despite Hogan's part-timer status. He also preferred a babyface versus babyface match as opposed to having to temporarily turn heel to service the match. Well, on camera, brother, I'm a great guy. But when that camera goes off, brother, oh, it's a different story, brother. Oh, brother. Number 2. Iron Sheik even though the Iron Sheik is several years removed from the Hulkster's heyday, he was arguably Hogan's most renowned rival inside the squared circle. After all, Sheiky Baby never fails to mention Hogan in a Twitter insult. Hogan claimed on The Steve Austin Show that former AWA promoter Vern Gagne tried to put a bounty on his head after Hogan left the promotion, which began his infamous hateful history with the Sheik in that epic clash in 1984. Gagne's son Greg contradicted the allegation in an interview with Sports Kita, saying the Sheik made it up after the bout that Gagne asked him to break Hogan's leg as revenge for Hogan departing. Number 1. Doink the Clown Even though Doink the Clown creator Matt Bourne has passed away, his vicious opinions regarding Hogan continue to be widely disseminated. Bourne had lots to say about the Hulkster before his death in 2013, yet Hogan never responded publicly to any of Bourne's statements. According to Bourne, Hogan and Bret Hart's feud all started at WrestleMania 9, where Bourne was scheduled to wrestle Hogan. Bourne speculates that Hogan's reluctance was due to Bourne's proximity to Buzz Sawyer, a person with whom Hogan did not get along well. Then, Bourne went on to discuss his own problems with Randy Savage, including an accusation that Savage had blacked out Hogan's eye at the same WrestleMania. That's all for this video, folks. Catch you on the next one.